failure to clarify the husband's and wife's role in a relationship is a major cause of marital disruption. As a couple, when you're married, you will be involved in an almost endless number of activities and responsibilities, and each one of them demand a decision. Assignment of task in a marriage should not be made simply because of parental example. Now what I mean by that is, you know, because your mother did it, or your father did it, it doesn't mean that you should do it in your marriage, because it may not be the best thing. They may have done it because of their father's, 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 father's habits. But it may not mean it's the best thing for you. I will give you an illustration. There was a wife who got married, young, beautiful bride. And as they got together in the home, uh, off the honeymoon and everything, you know about the story of how she was getting ready to cook her Christmas ham. And as she began to cook, cut the ham, she cut it in half and threw one half away, and she put the other half in the oven to bake. Her husband watched this very strange ceremony because he paid for the ham. And he was trying to figure out why would my wife cut a ham in half and throw a half away and only cook one half. And so he asked his wife, he says, sweetheart, why did you do that? And she said, well, my mom always did this. And so he decided, I'm going to call my mother-in-law and find out why she did this. And he called his mother-in-law and he asked her, why did my wife throw this half of ham away? And her mother told him, well, that's the way my mother always did it. And so no one seemed to be giving him any answer that satisfied him. So he called the grandmother and asked her. And she was a very, very old lady. And he went and asked her, lady, Miss, uh, why did you always throw half of the ham away? And the old lady says, well, son, let me explain it to you. Years ago, uh, when we were growing up and I was young, a young wife, we were very, very poor. And we did not have the resources to purchase uh, a large pan to bake a ham in. So in order for me to get the ham to fit in the pan, I had to cut it in half. Because it's the only kind of size of the pan we had. And so we would take the other half and we'd throw it away and put it on the side. And of course we had to throw it away because it couldn't keep, because we didn't have any refrigerators in those old days. So we could only cook half of the ham. And of course, that was the, the grandmother's explanation as why she would cut the half and the, the ham and half, the half and ham. Well, he went back home and of course he had to correct his wife very quickly. Because they had a pan that was big enough for the ham. It was up to date. It's nowadays. You can afford, hopefully, a pan that's big enough for a ham. But you see, it was tradition. Something that her mother did that she did not figure out that her grandmother did not know was not important for nowadays. And so many people do the same thing with their lives together. Your father or your mother's way of doing things may not be the way you should do it. As a matter of fact, it may not be even biblical. It may simply be accepted as social and credible in society, but not necessarily the right way to do it. So we should therefore not assign tasks to husband and wife based on parental example, because it is expected of some people, they say in the social group, that they should do things a certain way. In our society, we have social norms for husband and wife. For example, the husband takes the garbage out, the wife cleans the dishes. The husband paints the house, the wife fixes the furniture in the house. The husband uh, repairs the roof, the wife, she hangs up the curtains. And we got these rules in our heads that we never ask ourselves why we do them. Now that's called social group pressure. That is not necessarily right either. And so we need to be very, very careful when we start deciding rules in our marriage. Uh, who should cook is not a question of male or female. It's a question of ability. Hello? And do you know that the majority of the greatest chefs in the world are not males, are not females rather, they are males. Apparently we need to ask ourselves some questions. Maybe men are better creative cookers, cooks than, than females cookers. I guess you'd say, yeah, they're cookers all right, we're the cooks. When an individual's training, abilities, 
or temperament make it difficult or unnecessary to follow an established cultural norm for a role, the couple will need to have the strength to establish their own style of working together. It is imperative, therefore, and I want you to make a note of this, that a couple deliberately and mutually develop the rules and guidelines for their relationship as husband and wife. It is imperative, both the husband and the wife, to get together, even before you get married, and deliberately develop the rules and the guidelines for your relationship as husband and wife. Write them down, clarify them. This clear assignment of authority and responsibility by the spouse does not create a rigid relationship, but it allows flex flexibility and, or and also order in what could be done. If you don't clarify your roles, you will end up with chaos. I want to spend some time now thinking about your role as a wife or a husband. I'm going to ask some questions. First question, what is the woman's place in the home? I will ask the females in the seminar, where are you in your mindset concerning what a wife should be? I will ask the males in here, what is your concept of a wife and what she should be? Let me give you a couple of things that men have come up with to describe their wives. Number one, some say property, write that down. My woman is my property. That means the wife has almost no rights, no privileges compared to those of the husband. The husband is the family provider, and often the wife is merely a chattel for a husband's sexual expression and someone to iron his shirts and have babies. This is where the woman is seen as property or merchandise. This is a very common concept throughout the world. It has no place in a Christian home. The second concept that men have of women is one of a compliment. She is a compliment. Write that down. That means the wife's rights have been increased a little bit and marriage is the wife's central life interest. That means the husband is still chief provider and has more authority than the, the wife, but she is a friend to her husband. He achieves and she supports him. And do you understand that concept? Now what this concept is saying is she is a compliment to him, which means she doesn't do anything aggressively. If he decides to be a doctor, she works to help pay his doctor fees through college. If he decides to go into business, she minds the shop. She doesn't own it. Uh, she is only a compliment to him. This concept is also not biblical. And we will learn from the scriptures that both husband and wife are equal partners as far as God's eyes are concerned. The third concept that men have of women and wife is junior partner. Now in any firm, that's what they call a senior partner and a junior partner in the company. And this concept of junior partner is the wife's rights have been increased because she works outside the home for pay. But her main motive is to improve the family lifestyle, not to have authority. She has a little bit more authority and rights than a non-working woman, but she knows who's still boss. In other words, she still submits her paycheck, so to speak to her boss, which is her wife, I mean her husband, hopefully. Yes? Now, this junior partner concept is very, very common in our society. As a matter of fact, all of these are very common in our society. Some men see their wives as property. You know, go, let's go to bed. I don't feel like, I don't care how you feel. I feel like going to bed, let's go to bed. All right? Some men see their wives that way. Uh, some see them as compliment. In other words, you're only around to make me look good. You have no place, you have no room, you have no say in the matter. I make your decisions, you only agree when I tell you I need your advice, or your, your comments, or whatever. And then thirdly, you are join your partner, which means you go to work, because I need you to help pay for this house. Alright? But his name is on everything. 
That's the wife being a junior partner. Then we have the fourth concept of the wife role, and that is equal partner. Equal partner. This is where the wife and husband share equal rights and responsibilities. Equal rights and responsibilities. This one is very, very important. Now I'm going to ask you to think about some questions I'm going to ask. And I want you to give me some answers. You won't go through all of them. And then next session that I have with you, I am going to give you a printout, which I was supposed to prepare this session, but I'll have to pass it on for next session. And you're going to have to list some answers of some things to expose what you think a wife or a husband should be. And then we'll compare them to what the Bible says. And we'll see how off you were. Yeah. All right, first question. This one is a sentence you have to finish. In marriage, I believe a role is what? Can someone answer that question? What is a role? If I say the husband's role, the wife's role, what do I mean? Function, write that down. Someone says function. Someone says responsibility. What else is a role? Any other comments? Function, responsibility, place, disposition. All right. I won't comment on that one. I'm asking the second one. If you are a husband or a wife, or you intend to be, my role, my main role in marriage is what? If you are a husband or a wife, or you intend to be, your main role in marriage is what? Now let's have some answers. Let's talk to some women first. Oh, okay, we got a guy who can answer first. Commitment. Your main role is commitment. Role? Is that a role? It's not a role. To me, that's a characteristic. That's a, something to do with character, commitment. What is your main role as a wife? Any wives dare to try and answer that? Respect what? Respect and edify your husband? That's what you're referring to. All right, that's a really good answer. What is your main role? Anyone else? Hmm? Okay. Hmm? Companion, your main role is to be a companion. I like friends better than companions. Companions can get you into ruin. Right? Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Many companions bring you to ruin. But friends, stick closer to brothers. <laughs> All right? But I know what you're saying. Okay, you should be a friend. All right. What else? How about some of the men? What is your main role, man, in marriage? Yes, sir. Your main role is to love your wife. Boy, that's a big one. There's a lot of things in that word love, I'm sure, you, you're thinking about. Right? You're not just talking about sex there. You're talking about all kinds of things, right? The whole, the, the whole gamut. Right. Yes, sir. To be a covering. That's a beautiful answer. Your main role is to be a covering, someone says here. Anyone else? What do you got to say? Come on, man. Yes, sir. To get your main role is what? That's your main role? That sounds like a result. I So the husband's main role should be for him to be always available for the family to have access to. That's a very, very good answer. I like that. All right? Well, we're going to, we're going to find out next time if these answers are right. All right? All right. We think of roles, though. I'm really trying to get at when, you, when I ask you roles, we're dealing with basically principles. I'm hearing answers from principles. That's good. You learn some things. I could tell. 
you learn the principles. But what about the practical roles? What do you think is your role as a wife? Come on, women. Come on, men, husbands. What is your role? Give me, just give me some of them. I think to be a protector. Yes, how? By looking at every aspect of the home. Be a protector, you say. Wife. All right. Come on, give me some of the roles. You are running from these, these basic roles we get in this community. All right. Let me, let me help you. Provider. All right. One husband says you're a provider. Okay. All right. What's the other one? What's the other one? Yes, sir. To teach the Word of God to your family. Okay. To support. To support in every way. Okay, that's what he's really referring to, I think. Provider. Okay. What are the rules? I mean, what does the hus husband do? All right, I mean, we are really spiritual now and everything. But let's get back down to the, you know, the house and the cleaning and the cooking and the driving and the washing and, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, what is the role of the wife? What is the role of the husband? Yes, ma'am. I feel that the husband should be responsible for the income, basically, for this wife. Okay. Work and go out and assist, fine. Mm -hmm. But I think basically that's his responsibility. And to see that the woman and the children are taught the word of God and see that they go in the right way. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very well said. Uh, she said that uh, the woman's, the husband's role is to provide and to work and to support the family, and that he's also responsible for the spiritual leadership of the home. And that is definitely true. All right. The garbage is filled up. You're still running from my practical stuff. <laughs> Who cleans the dishes? Who mops the floor? <laughs> Who mows the lawn? <laughs> I hear the women. It's amazing. Who mops the floor? Both of them. Who cleans the dishes? Both of them. Who mows the lawn? The man. You know, I don't know if this is going to work out right. <laughs> now, what are you saying here? I think the male should take care of all the work that, that, that needs heavy equipment operation. <laughs> okay, so she believes that the man should take care of all the heavy duty responsibilities. Okay, anyone else? They should work together. They should work together, someone says here. All right, you like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell these married ones, but they are sticking together. All right, so if I were to ask you the next question then, where did you form your beliefs about your role? What would be your answer? Tradition, some people say. What else? Inherit, that's tradition. From the Word of God, some people, that's rare, but there is a, it does come from it. From what you what you've seen. From what you've seen, observed, in other people's marriages right. and homes, your parents. And I think that's, that's really where we learn most of what we are doing. From our parents, from what we see, from, you know, the, the family and so forth. If I was to ask you to list five of your mate's roles, I wonder what you would list. Interesting. We'll deal with that next time. You say, someone answered the, question, uh, answered the question by saying, I believe it is the husband's responsibility to go out and work to provide for the family. All right. I have a question to ask. How can you best, if that is true, if it is true, how can you best fulfill your mate's role? How can you help him fulfill his role or her role, whichever the role is? Can you give me some ideas? Let's say if your husband had to go out and work, how could you best fulfill his role? Mm -hmm. Boy, you're a good wife. I don't know who you're married to, but that guy, I hope he knows, uh, I hope he knows what he got. You, you, you're just like my wife. You, you're fantastic. You ain't married? Hold your hands up. Me, I'll get you a wife. I mean, a husband. <laughs> 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 I believe you're married. I know you're married. Praise the Lord. 
I just hope he knows what he has. But that's a very, very good answer. I think it is, you know, no matter what the role is, you in your place should try your best to make sure that that person can, can operate at their best, at their maximum. And you do the things that will make that happen. Uh, I'll give you an example. If, if your husband, in your concept, should be the one to go out and work and, you know, to earn the money for the home, uh, if that is your concept, we'll deal with that later on. But if it is, then if, if you are the wife, then you know that you should do everything to make him think less when he comes home. You understand what I'm saying? He shouldn't have to think of any shirts, any pants, why this thing is on the floor, why the kitchen ain't clean, why this house smelly, why this bed ain't made, why the food ain't cooked. Because you see, you want to make him function easy. You want to make him operate at his maximum. But if you got to come home after he finished keeping house outside, and got to keep house inside, you are not helping him. Because your cousin will be preoccupied wherever he goes. And that reduces his maximum operation ability. And so this is a, a way that you can best help your mate fulfill his or her goals. And so it is with the wife. I mean, if the wife is working as well, which in our modern day society has become a necessity in many, many homes, uh, then all the roles change suddenly. You cannot have your traditional role with man out, woman in. If both are out, then both got to realize that in is also equal. And therefore, he cannot expect for his wife to function the same way a wife who doesn't work functions. All right? So therefore, that husband uh, and that wife has to take into account each other's roles, including the role of work. And they should help their mate fulfill his or her role to his maximum. And I think that is why places like McDonald's have become so well known and Kentucky Fried Chicken because of our society. All right? Sometimes, you know, husbands and wives don't get to you know, have the pleasure, if they're both working, of having a nice home-cooked meal every day. So you might need to stop off and buy something because you are considerate of each other's roles. All right? But we'll deal with how you can help with that situation later on. All right, now, I want you to write down five things for me. I'm going to put on the right side of the page one. Right next to it, put strongly agree. Under it, put two. Mildly agree. Down below that, put three. Not sure. And next, four. Mildly disagree. And number five, strongly disagree. I'll go over them again. Number one, strongly agree. Number two, mildly agree. Number three, not sure. Number four, mildly disagree. And number five, strongly disagree. Okay, now I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to circle underneath or next to them, just a mark, just a, or you can put a stroke. Or, or put the number which you think it is in your understanding, what your answer would be. Number one, it's A. The husband is head of the home. Do you strongly agree? Mildly agree? You're not sure? You mildly disagree? Or do you strongly disagree? B. The wife should not be employed outside the home. Where do you rate that? C. The husband should help regularly with the dishes. Everybody puts number one, don't they? <laughs> D. It is all right for the wife to initiate lovemaking with her husband. That's an important question. It is all right for the wife to initiate sexual activity with the husband. Do you strongly agree or do you strongly disagree? Five. The husband and wife should plan the budget and manage the money matters together. Number six. Neither the husband nor the wife 
should purchase an item costing more than $30 without consulting the other. Some of you will say $2. I'm going to read that again in case you didn't get it. Neither the husband nor the wife should purchase any item costing more than $30 before consulting the other. What do you think? Strongly agree? Strongly disagree? Mildly agree? Number seven. The father is the one responsible for disciplining the children. What do you think? Number eight. A wife who has special talent should have a career. What do you think? Number nine. It is the wife's responsibility to keep the house neat and clean. What do you think? Number 10. The husband should take his wife out somewhere twice a month. That's a serious one, man. The husband should take his wife out somewhere twice a month. Strongly agree? Mildly agree? Most men will say, not sure. Number 11, the wife is just as responsible for the children's discipline as the husband is. What do you think? Number 12, it is the husband's responsibility to do the yard work. Number 13, the mother should be the teacher of values to the children. The mother should be the teacher of values to the children. Is that true or not? How do you feel about that? Number 13. 14, rather. Number 14. Children should be allowed to help plan family activities. Agree? Strongly disagree? Number 15. Children develop better in a home with, where parents have strict discipline. Children develop better in a home with parents who are strict disciplinaries. Agree? Disagree? Number 16, money that the wife earns is her money. Agree? Strongly agree? Not sure? Strongly disagree? What do you think? Number 17, the husband should have at least one night a week with his friends. Who? <laughs> What do you think? It's a very important question. The husband should have at least one night a week with his friends. Agree? Disagree? Number 18. The wife should always be the one to cook. Strongly agree? Strongly disagree? The way some women cook, so most men are right, I'm uh, not sure. <laughs> number 18? Here's number 19. The husband's responsibility is to his job and the wife's responsibility is to the home and the children. Agree? Disagree? Mildly disagree? Now we need to ask ourselves some questions. What does the word of God say concerning the roles of wife and the role of husband? I want you to think about the questions you just read it yourself on. We'll deal with them next time, like I say. We'll see how off you are. Let us turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians 5, 21.
Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as under the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wife be subject to her own husband in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and gave himself for it, so that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. Verse 28. So, that's the way men ought to love their wives, as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife really loves himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but he takes care of it, and cherisheth it, and feeds it, even as the Lord Jesus does the church. For we are members of his body, and of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his mother and father, and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall become one body. This is a great mystery, but I am speaking concerning Christ and the church even. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And wife, see that you respect and honor your husband. Amen. Now, one word, what one word summarizes a wife's responsibility to her husband? And let's look at First Peter chapter 3 verse 1, a moment, and we'll come back to Ephesians. But there's one word that summarizes the wife's responsibility to her husband. I didn't say to her home or to her children but to her husband first. In Hebrews chapter, first Peter rather, chapter 3 we read verse 1 Likewise wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. The word conversation there does not mean talking. This is where the King James Version falls down very badly. This word conversation is the Greek word that should have been translated behavior. So please correct that if you have a King James. And if you read it, you'll see why. He says, wives, be subjected to your husbands that if any of them do not obey the word of God, they also may without the word be warned by your behavior. Uh, the one word that summarizes the wife's responsibility, most people would think it is just subjection. But if you go back to Ephesians chapter 5, and if you look at verse 33, it tells that there's more to the wife's role than just subjection to the husband. It is reverence. Or better put, it is respect. Honor. So please write that down. If you want to know your role as a wife, your major role to your husband is to honor him. Respect him. Now that sounds as if you have to put yourself down to make him somebody. That doesn't mean that. And we're going to deal with why the Bible says you should honor your husband a little later. The husband's got a problem. <laughs> they got an ego problem. And the only way you can deal with an ego is with respect. If you look at verse 2, verse 22 rather, 
of Ephesians 5, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. What does the words as unto the Lord suggest about the wife's role? It means that as long as the husbands act like the Lord, they deserve your submission. It says, why submit yourselves unto your own husbands? Please underline the word own husbands. There are some men who will try to run your life. And you do not have to submit to them. There are women, for example, who are pressure on their jobs from their supervising men. I know there are people who are even under the pressure of sexual harassment on jobs in order to get ahead in life. The Bible says the only person, the only man that you have the, the obligation, if you would use that word, to submit to is to your own husbands. That means you don't go and, and lay in bed with nobody else too. You submit only to your own husbands as unto the Lord. This as unto the Lord then implies that the husband has the responsibility to be like the Lord. And then he gets your submission. If he does not act like the Lord, then he cannot expect this submission that's written here. It says, the submission of the wife is the same way the church submits to Jesus. If Jesus was to come down and start taking a baseball bat and start going through the church, swinging it, trying to see how many heads he could knock off, uh, a lot of people will backslide. I'll be one of them. If Jesus came into his church, the body, and started cursing it, and kicking it, and spitting on it, and calling it bad names, I'd backslide. He wouldn't get me to follow him. I hope you're getting my point. If Jesus came down and walked in his church and starts raping it against its will, he would have no followers. It says the wife should submit herself to her husband just like the church submits to the Lord. So if you want to know how to get your wife to submit to you, men, you got to find out how Jesus gets the church to submit to him. And then you follow his pattern. First thing Jesus did was love the church. Secondly, he gave his life for it. Thirdly, he sent the Holy Ghost to keep it going. Fourthly, he provides all their needs according to his riches in glory, in his back pocket, Christ Jesus. He has compassion for the church and he, no matter what the church does, he still forgives them. Now it says, husbands, you got to do that if you want your wife to submit to you like the church submits to Christ. Most husbands, if you were to therefore put them up against what I just said, they don't deserve submission. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to leave the wife a minute. And I'm going to deal with the husband first. Is that okay? All the women say amen. amen. Alright. Let's find out what the husband's roles, role is from the word of God. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 1. We might as well find out God's original idea. He only has one idea. It's original. All of God's ideas are original. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God says, let us make man in our own image. And after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Underline the word man, please, in verse 26. And underline the word them in verse 26. 
God made man and he gave them dominion. So man apparently is not male, man is a species. Please make a note of that. Because some men walk around, I'm the man of the house. Mm -mm, both of us is man of the house. Man is the species. So women are man. You can get it in a minute. Now verse 27, you see it separated. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Man, male and female created he them. Man. See it separated? So God made man and man has two kinds. There's a male and a female in the man species. The next line. And God blessed who? Them. them. Not him. Them. And God said unto? Them. them. Not him. Them. Be fruitful. Them. Multiply. Them. Replenish the earth. Them. Subdue the earth. Them. And have dominion. Them over all the earth. So God gave the instructions not to him but to them. So we start off with God's idea of marriage. God's idea of marriage is both of them are equal partners. Please write that down. And remember that after you've married for 40 years. Don't forget it. You remind each other of it later on and say hey hey we are equal. God's original plan is that both of them are to multiply, both of them are to subdue. Subdue means to protect, to guard, to bring under subjection the whole world. Both of them. And both of them were given the power to dominate. Both of them. So let us take this into two worlds. Number one, God says, Dominate everything in the planet. What made Adam the head? Correct. Adam was the first one to be given information. Now, if any of you need to be checking on that, just let me show you where that takes place. In chapter 2, verse 15, The Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it, to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, the male of the species. He was the only one there when God said this. Of every tree of the garden you may as eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. The day you eat of it you will die. Then the Lord said, it's not good for this man to be alone. So obviously Adam was given this information about this tree and Eve wasn't there yet. Then she came and it was Adam's responsibility therefore to teach his wife the word, the word he got from God. That's what we call the word of God. So man's first responsibility is still his first responsibility. You get that? So the man's role let's start there, begins with instruction to the family of the Word of God. That is why when the tree was touched and the fruit was picked, God did not go to Eve because it was not Eve's responsibility to deal with the tree. It was Adam's responsibility to deal with Eve. God came and talked to Adam. I believe that this rule here is so important because many times the wife may do something that is not exactly right or acceptable or something. And yet God will come to God will come to the to the, the husband and the husband will transfer the responsibility. The problem with our 
society today is that people nowadays, um, especially the men, they don't know anything about responsibility. As a matter of fact, I am so sure that 60 to 80 percent of the men in our society don't even know what a husband is. And I'm not guessing. I counsel enough problems in marriage to know, and when I sit down and talk to husbands and wives sometimes and I ask the husband simple questions, he don't have an answer. And I'm talking about basic questions that will reveal if he knows what a husband is. He doesn't know the answer. All right? Now, let's look at this again. Verse 9. The Lord called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? He didn't even go to Eve, even though she was the one that did the disobedience first. Watch Adam's answer. Verse 10. And he said, I heard the voice of God in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Okay, the three things that Adam did when he forfeited his responsibility. You now watch this. It happens to every man. He failed in carrying out his responsibility. What was it? To teach his wife the word of God. He did not look after his family. The first thing we find Adam doing, number one, is he recognized guilt. He knew he was guilty. He heard the voice, so therefore he know what is right. <laughs> when you hear the voice of God, you know what is right. That doesn't mean you can listen to it now. But you know what is right. Secondly, he says, I was afraid. Now we know that fear has no place in perfect love. Because perfect love is supposed to cast out fear. This was the first time that fear entered the human race. And it came as a result of a husband who did not cover his family. Fear came in. He became afraid. And then thirdly, he hid himself. Where did he hide himself? Well, eventually you'll find where he took fig leaves and tried to cover himself. He hid himself behind the very same thing that caused him the problem. A tree. Most people do that. Men, ever since that day, have been knowing what is right, being afraid of what is wrong, and running from both. Hiding. Most men hide behind their egos. They hide behind their, their power and their strength, their physical brutality, beat women around. Some of them hide behind their position in the community. When they get home, everyone knows how, how they are, but they show another face in the society, you know, they walk around. They hide behind money, clout. Uh, they hide behind political power or political persuasive power. They hide behind... Uh, the, the jobs, they stay to work, they won't go home and face the music. They hide behind sports. Instead of talking to their wives and having fellowship and communication, they watch baseball because they don't know what to say to their wives. They hide. And ever since Adam hid, we've all been hiding. I'm talking to men. Constantly hiding. But he didn't stop there. He said, I was naked. Adam felt ashamed. Now let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, about the man at the home. When he mess up, no matter how tough he seems, he's ashamed. Is that right, man? Now, now, I'm going to rebuke you if you lie to me. Strongly agree. Thank you very much, sir. Let's give that husband a good hand. Man. He, he's a good man, right on. His wife hit him to say that. No, no, she didn't. <clears throat> but you see, <laughs> you did. <clears throat> but you see, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm showing you is, this thing started all the way back there, and it hasn't stopped. Adam was ashamed. And every man, no matter how tough, 
how big he make you feel he is, how much muscles he put on, how hard he talk. When he fails, he may talk hard, but he is ashamed. He says, I don't care. I don't care. He cares. He does. And he goes and he hides and he, sometimes he soaks it in liquor. Understand me? Or he goes over to the boys and try and forget it by, you know, talking crap, they, saw, they call it. Foolishness. To try and drown out his responsibility. He's ashamed. Some men feel in their marriages so they go look for sweethearts. They're ashamed to face the music. Adam was ashamed. He says, I was ashamed. You know what make or naked is saying to me? When a man shows his failure, he becomes naked to everybody. And boy, nothing destroys ego like failure. Oh, you want to hide. You want to go run. You want to go in a hole by yourself. You want to you be around people who, who tell lies to you. Hello? When a man fails, he likes to go to people who lie to him. Most of the time it becomes an extramarital relationship. Are you listening? He can't handle his own home, so he runs to an extra relationship. Who lies to him? Oh, you're so wonderful. You're Prince Charming. And he knows he's a failure. But you see, in that lying environment, he feels protected. Every time he returns back to the real life of his home, he has to face his, he failed, his failure. But as long as he stays in the lie, where this woman tells him all these crazy lies, he feels like he's somebody. When he goes back home again, he faces the real tune. I failed. I'm not a good father, I'm not a good husband, I'm not a good provider. He fails. And so we find men running and running and running away from this kind of responsibility and they become destroyed, naked, failure. It never stopped ever since Adam. Well, watch the Lord, verse 11. God says, who told you that you are naked? In other words, who told you that an ego problem? How come you're so ashamed? Have you eaten of the tree that I command you? And you should not eat. And what is God's question? His question is to the man. Have you eaten? <laughs> In other words, Father, I must say, he didn't do it. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Because I know you are supposed to be a good head of this home. I know it wasn't Eve. So you must have done it. No. God is dealing with responsibility. Let me make a note here about the man's position in this family. And please make a note of this. The only thing that we have on record here that made Adam the head of this family was the fact that he was given more information. So leadership in the marriage has nothing to do with physical ability. It has nothing to do with intellectual ability. It has nothing to do with economic earning power. Listen carefully. It has nothing to do with who has the, the most strength. The only thing that made Adam the head of this family is that he had some revelation from God that made him the head. So headship in the family is not based on what you have, but what you know. Hello. Now, if that is so, some of you men need to run fast to catch her up. Adam was the boss of the home, or should I say the head of the home, not boss, the head of the home, because of one thing. He happened to have been made first. <laughs> That's all. They both had the same dominion, you read it, the same power to subdue, the same authority to rule, the same right to multiply, the same responsibility to, to, to protect the garden. But Adam 
happened to be created first. He got more information. Now what does that mean then? The man is really only the head of the home when he knows more about God than the woman. If you follow God's pattern. That means the man is the head of the home when he can teach the woman the word of God. That's the man's role. To be the spiritual head in the family. That makes him the head. We're going to find out later on why that is so. We're going to see it in Ephesians 5. We read Jesus' responsibility. What makes Jesus the head of the church? He knows more than you. <laughs> why do you think your teacher is the teacher and you're the learner? Simply because the teacher is supposed to know more than you. If the student knows more than the teacher, there's no class. Yes? So in dominion, there was no class. In physical strength, there was no class. In authority, there was no class. But in knowledge, there was a class. He had to teach her. Therefore, the head of the home has nothing to do with who the man is, but what he knows. Well, look at verse 12. And this is the final thing this man throws away, gives up. The man said, this woman whom you gave to me, she made me eat this fruit from this tree. Adam's final disaster <laughs> has become our normal lifestyle. What is it? The transfer of responsibility. <laughs> 